Greetings, everyone. Welcome back, travelers, to episode 30. So we just hit another... Uh, milestone. Yeah, another milestone wow, there. 30 episodes. 30 episodes. 30 episodes. We, we would actually be a lot higher if uh, we didn't take uh, the break, but, you know, because COVID, we wanted to be safe. Yeah. Um, We're going to have to have a midlife crisis now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, regardless, glad that you uh, have joined us tonight. Tonight's episode is not titled Carl's Nose. It is titled The Fracture. We last left off, our adventurers had slayed a rather malevolent abolith deep within the lost ruins. A fragmented, separated colony of Azeltivado. A lost empire of ages long ago. <clears throat> of a society of sun elves. And these Sun Elves, now lost to time, have the memories of their final king within the mind of Kaz, who after experiencing a dream well, was able to relive some of the most important and impactful memories of their final king. And we begin our episode tonight, right where we left off, still within that treasure hoard room, as Jezebel swims through her mountains of gold coins, Kaz dealing with the immense psychological impact, and some trouble brewing within the heart of one of our heroes, and that is where we'll begin. After um, obtaining the Moonblade, I'm going to start walking back towards Jezebel. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, we are ready to uh, get going. Um, I, I guess. So we're not going to talk about what just happened. What is there to talk about? Uh, I was sent down here by Tempest to kill something. And this was the thing. Mission accomplished. I... I have memories that aren't mine. And... This is all that's left. This... These treasures, these... This gold. This blade. People. Long forgotten. Lost the time, I... I got to see their final moments. Right, so are you gonna be alright? You're gonna be able to make it back to the land? It's. I'm. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be fine. I'm just. It's a lot to process. I don't mean to rush you. This is why we're here. This is the gold. Is why we're here. I mean, I already filled up to the brim, so... Actually, as you've been digging through this gold pile, Jez, you realize something that you weren't aware of. As you've been stuffing this into your coat, you realize that your coat is not filling up. I'll be right back. I don't... I'm going to go stuff my pockets with more. All right. And I'm going to run up with, like, holding a bunch of stuff. Hey, everybody, look what I found. You know, and then I had, like, a tree, like, like, do the thing. It was, it was crazy, dude. No one actually saw what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> oh. Everyone was too preoccupied with you their own up. thing. <clears throat> but, however, Falner, could you give me a perception check, please? Look at all this cool stuff that I found. Look at these gloves. As you guys see, Lavende approach holding... What looks like a armful of uh, various assortment of artifacts, magical items, and weapons. Fourteen. You recognize uh, immediately that one of the items that he's holding 
is something you are quite familiar with. It is known as a Stormerang. It is a favored weapon of Storm Giants. In fact, it's not really the weapon that caught your eye. It's the Storm Rooms engraved into it. Oh, well, there. Well, let me see that. I'll have to reach up and I'll, I'll grab the... Well, you don't have to reach. I could just take it. What is it? It's, uh... All these runes on it definitely belong to a storm giant. <clears throat> don't you always talk about how you're a giant? I do. This is... This belonged to one of me kin. That looks a little bit big for you. Nonsense. I could throw this easily. Believe it or not, it is actually relatively light. Almost weighs nothing. Um, you're fairly certain that... Uh, this weapon was most likely attuned, and it most likely will grow in size to fit the stature of whoever wields it. If you guys have no objections, I think I'll hold on to it. This. Then I'll set the stuff next and like start. As you guys separating. are scouring through these items, um, <clears throat> you just hear the consistent noise of gold and gems clanging against the floor as you look over. It's almost as though. Jezebel is uh, growing more anxious and excited at the same time as her coat just doesn't seem to stop taking the gold. Oh god, I hope it's still in there when I check. Oh god, what if I send it to another dimension? What, what if... Jeze Jezebel, can mm. we look at the cool stuff that I found? Yeah, 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 sure. I'll be over in a minute. I'm kind of busy right now. What, what if... I'm gonna see, like, is there, like, a large item... At all, it looks like it shouldn't fit into a coat. Um, I want to test a theory here. If you're looking for something that's larger uh, than, I'd say, a, there is a quite ornate marble elven statue that's about three feet tall. Fuck it. I'm going to try putting it in my coat, in the pocket. As you go to put it in your pocket, it just... <laughs> Look, I could put fauna in here. No, you fucking could not. You can't hear me. You actually <laughs> watched as it slipped in through your jacket <clears throat> into the dark recess of the inside lining. You, you, for a split second, you caught a glimpse of something there. Something inside. Something gold? It was bright. That's all you know. Alright, oh. Can I try reaching in and pulling out a handful? As you reach in to the jacket... Your hand disappears into the lining. As it does, you feel that your arm keeps going and you're moving around it. You just feel open space. No. No. I will do this later. All right. And I'm going to just stop. All right. What's, 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 the, what's happening? What's the happening? What's wrong? What's wrong? What did you see? What? I didn't see nothing. Oh, what's happening? I, I mean, I had the, the tree, like... Uh -oh. You got attacked by a tree. I, I don't, it's hard to kind of... No, it was in a, a, a pot. like a. It was growing out of what looked like a planter. Which, from this environment, knowing that there's no sun, no rain, mm -hmm. it should have been dead a long time yeah. ago. But the pot is still there, correct? The pot is still there. Okay, so I'm going to run over and grab the pot and like bring it back over. It was in this this pot. like It was like growing and then it like attacked me. He shows you a pot of dirt. Love and day has nothing in this pot. Well, yeah, because it it went into me. Did you get? Did you get a mustache? No. Why does everybody think I get? I'm, I don't steal. I Kaz, as you start looking through the belongings that are lying on the floor, you spot two things immediately stand out to you. One is a book. The next looks to be a fan, uh, an ornate uh, folding fan. You immediately recognize that as the belongings of the king, Elifel. Your book, your fan lie on the ground. Not only that, but you know of every single item in this room. What it does. Hmm. So I'm going to bend over and reach for the fan and book. <clears throat> it's a... Uh... <clears throat> These are mine, I'm sorry, I mean, 
These belong to the king. What king? Um, that's concerning. So who I saw the memories through. Um, could, could I, could I have those? Yeah, you can have. If you, yeah, the yeah. Don't see why not. Take the fan and book. All right. As you pick up those two items, you do recognize every single item in the room, and you could identify all of them and their properties and what they do. However, the one thing that is odd, even in your state, this tree that Lavende is talking about, as far as your memories recall, there should be no tree in here. Uh, Lavende, you said th- there was a tree in this part of the... Yes, that is what, that's what it was. Where did it go? It went in. It like stuck to me and then it was gone. I don't know. It, it stuck to you and it's gone? Yeah. It's hard to explain if you weren't there. Mm-hmm. So like in you? That is the only conclusion. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, show me where it penetrated you. Don't think I'm going to say it like that. Hold on. Let me get up my book for illustrations. Yeah. Go ahead. So it's like, like I, it was like coming toward me, and I, I reached out to touch it, and then it kind of like started to just, like branches. And it's like, the branches, pierced into you like briar. Yeah. Just it like, pierced, and then it kind of just stayed there. Mm. You know, I. It's hard to explain. If everything here seems familiar, I've seen it before. I don't recall a tree being in this treasury. Uh, I. Are you feeling okay? I don't feel any different, not really. Hmm. As this happens, you notice that Sky makes her, her way up to you, Jezebel. Um. Uh. Wow, you have. Put a lot of gold in there. It's uh, what is that jacket doing to it? I was just taking it to a special place where I can access it later. Hopefully. How much can it hold? Uh, an infinite <clears throat> amount seems. I just shoved a statue in there. It was pretty tight. Okay. Um, what should we do about our friend? Lying on the couch in there. <clears throat> what friend? Um, I, uh, Brutka? I think her name? Oh, that, that one, that one. Ice. The mechanic that we're after. Well, we got like a water thing here. Is that, is that what that is? Like, we can put water in that, right? Well, like you this. instantly recognize this. This is a uh, decanter, it is um, enchanted with magical water purest water that will ever grace your tongue. One sip of it is enough to quench your thirst for a day. The water is infinite and it will never run out. You will never be thirsty again as long as you have this decanter. And you know that it has extremely powerful regenerative properties. It is capable of taking the most worn out and tired, sore individual and instilling a little bit of vigor back into them. I mean, we can put, I don't know if we should put water in from where the thing was, but I mean, that would be the easiest way to get it there, right? You want me to do that? It is enchanted. Uh, good eye, not and day. That could help our friend out tremendously. Um, why don't you uh, grab a hold of that, and it'll actually be pretty useful for our travels. Um, oh, oh, okay. And then I'll, I'll just reach down and grab it, just like have a strap. I could just... Yeah, it has a small strap that you can attach to either a belt or around your back. Okay, I'll just like throw it over my back. Small brass, you've been rather quiet. Just reflecting on the victory of battle. Hmm. Well, I hope. Is everything going okay over there, uh, Jezebel? Jezebel, you have almost cleared out the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and it still doesn't seem to be the jacket is uh, reaching capacity. I mean, I've, I've made a pretty big dent in this place. I have room for more if you guys have anything you want to shove in there. Well, I might be able to help a little bit. Uh, pick up uh, this the, this bag that's 
Lavender brought over. Um, uh, let's have a sec. I'll help you put stuff in there. I don't want to clean this whole place out. Right. We got a bite on me. That's right. Oh, fuck yeah, we're gonna need all this. I'm, I'm beelining for any um, um, diamonds, jewels. Well, there's diamonds oh, and jewels in here. There's a plethora of coin and gem. Although most of it is now with inside Jezebel's jacket. Fucking well, whatever's left, I hope. With. Yeah, you definitely could have picked up, um, I'd say, four. Four diamonds. Four diamonds, most likely worth somewhere around nine to ten thousand gold. What do we do with the statue that you put your head in? Do we just gonna leave that here? The well? I don't want that thing. It's. <laughs> It served its purpose. Should we destroy it? No. I, it'd be like... I was going to use it, but then I'm like, maybe I shouldn't use it. You know it. he can. I don't think you can, Lavender. Day. Mm-hmm. It's, um... It's helpful. For Elven blood only. It's, it's nothing against you. Oh, I, I get it. I think we should leave it alone. If someone who possibly survived or an ancestor of these people I would like to leave some sort of archive for them okay I don't know if it's going to be like dangerous you know no it's okay. just the only thing in that will is just sorrow well uh, I hate to break this up but maybe we should wake up the lady and get out of here so, oh, she and she's with us in the room, correct? You have to go back down the hall, and then she's lying within the entryway that Sky okay. left her at. Okay. So, do do I? Is there anything I need to do with this? Do I just just uh, one sip from it? It should be enough. Is there anything else in the room that stands out? Lavende has grabbed the majority of all of the. Uh, magical items. There are other items in here, but you can tell by looking at them that they are so badly damaged and deteriorated that the the magical effect, the Dwemer on them, has faded long ago. It's very possible that within another hundred, maybe five hundred years that the Mithalar will finally run out of energy and this entire place will be lost to the depths. Is there, um, is there any other doorways any, um... Yes, there are. In fact, if you look to your right and left within this chamber, there are passageways that lead into other parts of this temple. As you look to the one side, though, however, you see that passageway is um, is lost. It looks as though it is caved in. But the other one is quite clear. Um, there is a very accessible pathway out of this room. Would I remember what that leads to? Yes, you would. That leads to a uh, upper portion of this spire. It goes to an observatory. Uh, this was a place that you often enjoyed um, uh, having tea and discussions with some of your colleagues, especially in the matters of diplomacy. Most importantly, this observatory is where your body is. Lavender, if you want to go make sure our friend's okay, um, there's something I need to uh, look for. Okay. I'm going to... Is it okay if I take some of this other stuff? That go right ahead. Okay. I'm going to pick up, like, the, there's a quiver and pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to... Okay, um, does anybody want to come with me? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. He... It's going to go off for a second. Go off where? Uh, he's... I'm... There's more to this uh, place. Uh, there's something I want to see before I go. Anything I need to kill? I really hope not. This is like a type of thing that you want to do by yourself? Is that what I'm getting? If you want to come with, uh, that's perfectly fine. I don't think anything exciting will go or happen in where I'm going. Uh, I think I'll go with just to be sure, because we don't really know where we are, so well, I guess you do. 
Yeah. Right. <clears throat> All right. I will assist Lavender then. Okay, Fonda, you want to come too? Oh, f- f- yes, I'll come with you. Okay. Oh, is there just still a pile of treasure right there at his feet? Um, uh, of gear? Yeah. yeah of uh, artifacts? Yes. He has pretty much piled it all up into the center of the room. Mm-hmm. Well, if no one else cares, then I might just pick up a couple of these rings and go for the this, this, there's a nice, we, nice we, instrument right here. Why don't we grab what we can grab well, and then we can divvy it up on the ship? That sounds good. Whenever, wherever we can have time. That sounds good. I'll just, now. I could just stuff it all in me bag. Alright, let's go, guys. Okay. And I'm going to head back to Brutka. To Brutka? Yeah. Okay. As the party then makes their way down the pathway to is, return to Brutka. Is the, um, what did you call it, the abol- abolith? Or what yes, is it? the creature. Yeah, is it still there, kind of like floating? Yes, it is. I'm going to keep that in mind. But I'm going to keep going. Okay. <clears throat> Do aboliths make good food? Uh, you do not know. You didn't even know what an abolith was. That's right. It's been swimming in grey water. And has the sky been, uh, the sky coming with us? The sky is coming with you. Okay. Uh, the only person that's going with Kaz is Jezebel. Okay. Jezebel. As you make your way to this entranceway, the staircase begins to twist and turn. As you make your way up, your hand runs along the stairwell acquiring the dust and the residue and the grime of the centuries that build up the beautifully ornate metal engravings of swirls and suns and floral the pattern the patterns are in shapes that artisans of today even within the elven culture have forgotten about By the time you make your way up to the top stairs, Jez, you are able to passively see that this is affecting Kaz greatly. His movements seem slow. His his eyes almost seem to to stay on, on mundane things. It's almost as though someone is revisiting a child, like a child's home or a, a place that they haven't been to in a very long time. When you make your way up to the top clearing, Brick, you actually find what looks to be a old observatory. The plants and the wildlife that were in here at one point are long dead. The ceiling above you is this immaculate stained glass. It seems to be shaped in a dome. You actually see the site the water above the dome, and the lights of the Mithalar, the magic spreading across the stained glass. As you look over towards the balcony, the windows are open and lying just at the base of the balcony floor. There appears to be a single elven skeleton, still wearing its illustrious golden robes, now tattered, torn, degraded. I, uh, when I crouch down and uh, overlook the body, I just trace my hands over it, um, scanning it. You see that it still has the arrow sticking out of the now hollow chest cavity, the skeleton. The arrow itself is rather deteriorated, but you can still see the signs of an overly elaborate and well crafted arrow. I'll stand up and kind of hold my chest where the arrow is and... You feel it. You feel the sting of that arrow that pierced through your back and out your chest. You feel 
the sensation of blood beginning to fill your lungs. The last gasp and the cough and the whisper of betrayal leaving your tongue. You know, Jezebel, it, uh, it doesn't look like much now, but it was a rather beautiful place. Uh, that balcony right over there overlooked the city. You stare out now into the sea, the dark depths. You know that just ahead of you was the Grand Market of Zeltivan. This went on for many miles. In fact, Zeltivado is not really the city. It's more or less the territory that they control. And now that you look out into this dark abyss and see the fragmented uh, destruction of the ruins of this ancient city, you know in your mind where the true capital as Eltivana was, in the true throne room where you sat. This, where you sit now, was merely a meeting place to speak with the ambassadors of the Netherese Empire who were <coughs> invading and destroying nation upon nation with their flying battalion cities fueled by their mythalars, a force to be reckoned with a force that elves believed were no mere threat to their power, to their glory, and their high magic. But humans <coughs> are very industrious. They have ways of learning your weaknesses. This was the first part of his Eltivado to fall. It was, um, Right, the site, the sea, the market, uh, full of people, uh, the hustle and bustle. It was uh, quite the sight, the sea, and the experience. But I stood here at this balcony, watching people burn, children, women, families that I met, christenings that I've been to. And this pain in my heart, this betrayal, by, by his own son, he, even in his last breath, I could feel it, the, the sorrow, but the love up until the last second until he closed his eyes for him, and the hope that he got away and was safe. This, the people here did not deserve it. Right, Kaz, um, I can't help but notice that you're saying I when you're talking about I'm sorry. him. You know, there's a separation there, right? You're not him. Jezebel, it's hard to say that I'm not. It's, I've lived this king's life. I've experienced his death. I've seen thousands of people die. Jezebel, what if I can't stop them? What if I can't stop Mela? What if... Just if I'm scared. All right, all right. I, hey, why don't we, why don't we go back and meet the others? Are you, did you do what you needed to do? Maybe we should get you away from this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm so over my head. Look, listen, we'll, we we're a team now, right? That's how this is working. We can get through it together. It'll be alright. Sorry. It's just... 
Just Jezebel. I want you to remember this. You be careful what you ask for. Because what you might get is my is not what you think. And uh. I asked for a purpose from Madame Moth. She sent me towards you. And all this. And there's so much more that awaits you than you really know. Uh, yeah, guys, I already know quite a bit about asking for more than what you can bargain with, so why don't we go ahead and head back and get you away from us? All right. Thank you. It, it means a lot that you're here. It's, it's nice to know I have a companion like you. I'm gonna like pat him on the back and just kind of like lead him first out of the room. As you do, and you pat him, and Kaz begins to turn and head towards the stairwell, you see his movement begin to slow. And as he does, you see ceiling and that domed glass begin to freeze over. As you turn around, you see the figure before you, the long, straight, black hair, the solid black eyes and black goatee with a fine-trimmed mustache, his long, black nails with soot-covered pads of his fingers, his beautifully aristocrat-like tailored clothing. So... Absolutely beautiful, Jezebel. You made Daddy very proud. <laughs> right, right. What can I do for you? I take it something that you want is in my jacket. No, 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 no. You've already taken what I sent you here for. Go ahead, summon her. I want to see it again. I'm going to assume I know what he is talking about and I'll summon the sword. As you summon your hex blade, your hand begins to fill with the grip. Although this time, you do not just have a simple blade of ice holding between your fingers. No, this time, as the weapon forms, a beautiful black bladed saber with a curve just at the very end as it tips up, as you follow this black blade all the way to the hilt. The hilt of itself is of an open maw of a devilish man who resembles Lephistus. His fanged teeth grip down on the blade. The appearance gives the effect that the blade itself is Lephistus's tongue. His long hair creates the guard, creating wisp that cover your knuckles and the back of your hand. The grip is ornate and elaborate. And as your fingers tighten around it, the sheen of ice, soft snowflakes begin to fall from the blade. Looks quite different now, doesn't it? Right, a little on the nose, don't you think? Uh, what? <laughs> oh, just because I'm a, a devil, I can't have some vanity? I'd hate to call you narcissistic. No, I'm very much narcissistic, and I should have good reason to be. Is there something you're going to take from me? That sword? is my touch. Every now and then, when you are exceptionally vicious with that weapon, it will claim the soul for me. 
You see, the dealings with Esther, that can be rather, well, messy, and you often have to do a bunch of... red twine that you have to cross. This is a shortcut, and I love shortcuts. So, be a good little girl, and head out and start collecting those for me. So I'm assuming to meet my end of the bargain I have to kill Shiv with this? You can kill Shiv with whatever you like. I care not about the scoundrel. My end of the deal is more mm, quantity huh. or quality. Ah. I'm gonna. And also, again, bravo. With Kaz, you're making an excellent leader. I'm sure with just a little bit more of a push, you'll have the rest of the crew wrapped around your finger, doing whatever you like. Right. So, is that, is that that then? Are we done? For now. And you watch him disappear to a cloud of cold mist. Time speeds up as normal. And you follow Kaz down the stairs. You, you coming? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, that wrapped up in this elaborate architecture here. It's beautiful. Meanwhile, the entrance of this spire, the other companions have made their way to Brutka, who's lying exhausted and unconscious on the couch. Small for us, could you, uh, could you lift her up so I can sit there and have her head on my lap? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'll go over and position her in a way for maximum drinkability. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to sit down and allow him to... What? That was a really bad motion. I'm sorry. What I am I allowed to do? What'd you Set do? her back down <laughs> so I can hold her head. Yeah. Small brush. You want me to hold her head? <laughs> no. I don't want you to hold her head. Yeah. Uh. So where am I? <laughs> As the two of you awkwardly fumble to get Brutka in position to drink water, uh, Sky grabs the decanter out of your hand and starts pouring have, it into her mouth. Have any of you ever touched a woman before? I didn't. I literally told him to put her head on my lap so I could hold her head and put the water in. That was his fault. Don't don't look at me weird. As the arguing ensues, Brutka begins to drink from the decanter. As she does. You hear a. <laughs> oh, oh, that is that is foul. That is very foul. <laughs> oh, you're you're awake. Her eyes widen as she stares. Who are all of you? Uh, you're you're Brutka, right? Dai, that is my name. We're set down here by by Man Manly. Is that what his name is? I don't really. He's he's dead. So you've come to kill me then? No. You are Manly. No, that's no. fine. Hey, no, no, no. We're not here to kill you. We're here to save you. We're here to save you. <laughs> and how do you suppose to do that? Kill yeah. everyone in the facility? Well, Manly is already dead, so you don't have to worry about that. Do you just killed everyone in the facility? Yeah. We thought everybody turned into like a ghoul. It was gross. I don't suggest going into. And what about the creature? The fish. The abolith. Very dead. We we definitely do. I don't know if you should walk, but you all killed an abolith. It is still floating in there. Why is it supposed to be hard? believe my ears at the moment. How's your how's your side? Do you have like a wound? Like how is that? I'll be fine. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I've spent enough weeks. I can heal it for you. I think we could all heal it for you if you want it, but I mean No. No, we need to get back to the facility. I need to get to one of the 
vessels and so there are more of the fish things yes in the hangar if we go I can try to clean clean what I can and fix what I can and you think I should I ought to carry you well, I think I should carry you how about someone? No, I don't need to carry. I could walk on my own. Uh, someone, if someone hears her, she will have to be carried. Well, she or can walk on her own. I just said I could walk on my own. She's fi- <laughs> she's fine. She's fine. So what what happened down Get, here? Get you crowded me. Get away. Uh, I'm at the back. She up. sits up. Ah. <sighs> you see her her shoulder looks. You can see one one of the bones is actually almost uh, protruding under the skin. You can see that it looks like the shoulder is out of place. Uh, do you want to... Do, can you... Uh, okay, you did that. Mm. God! All better! Alright. Are you sure you're... What, what happened to you? Manly the crazy bastard, he... Re- he lost his mind. I said that it was because of the Suck and L and I, we, we ran into the steam vents, we sealed ourselves away, and we got trapped between those crazies and the swaggin over here and that foul beast. Suck and L tried to. He tried to sneak by the swaggin, but they. He wasn't quick enough. They, um. They got him and. There's nothing left. The bone and all. But I don't want to think about that. Well, should we formally introduce my Brutka of Palkarek? Lavender Bully. Oh, Fauna Wild Hope. Smallvros, son of Largok. Cleric of Tempest. So you're not a, um... Still living within the Kund? I am... I am on a path led by Tempest. It's not very often we see half-orcs from... From Zakud. That's right. Does she look like she's from Zakud? No. Just by tell, talk, hearing her accent, you can tell that she's not. She definitely did not grow up in a native or culture. You do not seem like you were raised in Zakud. I is not. I'm from Palkarek. <clears throat> I was uh, born there. Which means that you and I have nothing in common other than the color of our skin. Uh, she gets up. I don't know if it makes you feel better, but I think Taku is still alive and he was able to not... Taku? Yeah, he's. He, we were able to keep him from being... Good. You know. We need to get to him. He can help me. Especially with some of the equipment. It's rather heavy. At this point, you hear the sound of footsteps approaching as her head quickly spins towards the hallway into the entrance. You see Kaz and Jezebel turning. Oh, I guess they're back. Did you... What? And everything go okay? Who are they? Oh. Yeah, she's up. The all members of our crew. Um, crew? Why do you... Uh, you don't look like... Navy, you don't look like you're. <laughs> oh, we are very Navy. navy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not Navy. No. It's not, it's not oh, you're pirates. That's fine. I don't have a problem with pirates. <clears throat> not this rules. I don't like rules. <clears throat> so, what's the plan now? I think we're going to go back to Taku, right? Is that what they're going to do, Britka? Yes. I think that, uh, Take me to him. All right. Uh, well, uh, glad to see you are feeling well. Uh, uh, tears, the water has helped. Yeah, it did. 
That's good. That's good. Um, sorry, M my name's Kaz. Uh, this is Captain Jezebel. Hi, hi. Uh, Captain, I... I am in your debt. I am Brutka of Palkarek. Nice to meet you, I think. Well, you're the best person I've ever met. You saved my life, otherwise I would have starved down here or been eaten. So... Hmm. Well, I mean, technically, one of these three saved your life, right? It was Sky. the one that delivered the final blow. I mean, bringing me back. Mm -hmm. Just now. While we were gone, I mean, reviving her while we were gone. Oh. Yeah, that was Sky. Sky did that. Sky um, pokes out from behind Babadee. Yes, that's uh, me. Oh, oh. You're behind me. Oh, so I, uh, I didn't, didn't see you there. Um, thank you, Sky. I didn't see her <coughs> either. She does that sometimes. <coughs> Is. The group then gets to compose themselves. They get up and slowly make their way back into the facility. As you do, um, as you approach where you left Taku, uh, you can see that he is still passed out, uh, sleeping in what he would hate to admit as a bear. He's sleeping inside of a bear? No, he's sleeping. <laughs> he's sleeping like a bear. Oh. Like, like, curled up into himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the fetal position of a bear. I thought he turned into a bear. He did. Say that to him. Say that to his face. Dear you. Uh, so as we're, I'm assuming we're leaving. As you, uh, yeah, you guys would have already have left. Okay. Um, before we leave, uh, I would like to kind of linger towards the back. And I want to stop Sky, not making notice of two okay. of the other companions. Um, tap her on the sh shoulder. She turns around. Yes? Uh, Sky, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, when you first joined the crew, what, what was your um, dream again? I went to, uh, I went to find the great city of the Zeltivado, and this is the closest I've ever been to that dream. I. I think that the city must be very close. I'm gonna crouch down to her and uh, get eye level and just kind of make sure that the our Oh, you are... don't need to do that. You can stand up. I want to tell you, um, and I go to whisper in her ear. I I know where the throne is. The the throne. I know where the rest of the city's at. That's fantastic. Then we can... When we get back to the ship, I, I, I'll get my maps, and and we can, we, can, we can figure it out from there. Yes. I thought um, it'd be a good way to repay you for putting yourself in danger, and... It'd be good to talk to somebody about what I just experienced, if you don't mind listening to me. That's fine. All right. Uh, well, I wanted to tell you that in private. So, uh, let's just keep this between us, just for right now. Okay. All right. Mm, so, we're doing the rest of the party. <clears throat> Moving forward, after Taku is awoken by the efforts of the group. You notice that he begins to sit up. Good morning, sunshine. Uh, hungry. No, I bet you are. My mouth is dry. Mm. We brought you a friend. Brutka! Brutka! Is it? Uh, it's, it's me, it's me. It's alright, the big guy. I'm fine. Just a few bumps and bruises. Uh, I'm gonna need your help, though. We need to get the vessels brought back up to ship shape. And, uh, we need to get out of here. Hmm. 
understood. Um, Lavendy, um, why don't you give um, Paku a drink of water? Oh, oh, yeah, and I'm going to take it off my back, and here, you can... He just grabs it. Uh. Just be careful. <laughs> be, don't... Um. Well. Mm-hmm. 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 M
uh, er earlier. Uh, you know how I came back on fire? Do you remember when when I when Manly had Sky? Do you remember that? Yes. Uh, I don't want to do that ever again. <laughs> um, there was like a giant fire beast that I saw. I don't know what it was. It looked like an entity made of pure flames. It was an entity. I know you don't know, but it looked like Ragnaros. <laughs> oh God. It, um, so I don't think it's safe I wouldn't do it again I don't feel like Indipedio should do that that well, much raw mana in the wrong hands is very dangerous do they, do they refine the mana here? oh yes we uh, were about 95% completed with the refinery process and there's enough mana stored beneath the, the bedrock here to um, yeah, we could probably mine this for a decade at least this is probably, if I had to estimate, somewhere between the net worth of five to ten billion gold. Oh, we're taking that bead. So what happens if you find the mana? What does that? What does that mean? It can be used for all sorts of things: enchantments, uh, magical components, creations. Um, pure mana can be used as a, an almost infinite energy source. Do you think that they could finish it if we brought them with? In fact, a lot of high magic that the elves used used to rely on mana just to work properly. We need to seal this off. It doesn't need to fall into wrong hands again. What? No, no, what the, I'm not saying that we keep it. Is there a way that we can take it with us and you guys could finish it? Take Is what? The mana? No, it's it's in the it's in the earth. It's do they have like any a, do they have any already completely refined mana? Sky? No, we then we within get finished oh. with the processing. Oh, Sky, right, Sky fell into like a pool of this stuff, right? Is that what she fell into? What she's trying to say is the the refinery takes the mana and makes it... Makes it less volatile. Yes. Oh, so we can't, like, there's not like a container that you guys have? That we no, we that's do not the... do anything with the mana. We have enough gold. L listen, why don't we do this? This is gonna be like Cass's passion project. Do I have any... Give Cass the deed. Has can decide what to do with it. I mean, just with this, I mean, if you own this property in this land, and you return to the surface, you could hire an entire new excavation team. Breed, come down and. In fact, if you wanted to hire me to do that, I could do that too. But I would much rather just leave and never come back. That's more or less what I would like to do. Yeah, personally, I don't care what happens to it. I don't care who gets a hold of it. If it's you want, problem. we could rig the place to blow. Yes. Alright. I will say that um, we will need to get very far away before it goes, though. Um, what of our ship? Where is your ship? On the surface. On well, the surface of the I water? I assume we get back to the ship. We get far away from the area. How, how, how do you go about uh, demolishing it? Would I know um, if an explosion that big would cause any disasters? You can give me a <laughs> insight check. That's a good point. Good point. That's a decade's worth of mana that we would... 16. We would 16. Okay. I'll just say this. You're not researched well enough to know what would happen if it goes. But... You do know that there is miles of water above this. Um, as powerful as mana is, uh, most likely would not affect anything on the surface. On the surface. If you could do that, um, it it would mean a lot. All right, I can do that. Oh, wow. Well, we'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get it ready to um, the blow um, after the vessel's completed. All right. Tsunami. Tsunami's fucking And um, if you want, you can go to um, Manly's office and see if there's anything else that you can find. Baku, let's go. We have work to do. Oh, so I'm heading towards Manly's office. Okay. I don't know what this... How bad is it going to be? They're talking about animals dying. <laughs> Just just whisper that to me. It's gonna be fine, Marvin Day. Is it though? If Bela gets their hands on this, uh, the amount of animals, pe 
people, a land that will be burned and sieged. It's... I mean, okay, so like, I'm all for making sure no one comes down here. I, I've, I know what just a little bit of mana can do, as volatile as it is. I am worried what might happen to the environment, right? Like, it could really fuck up the world in a ways. I, of course, I don't know for sure, but it could. I've seen just a little bit take out a whole building. I've seen what civilizations have done when they get a hold of a man like this. I've seen what they create. Well, if we just destroy the the facility, but don't fuck up the mana. I don't think that is what they're saying. I think we have to do both. Why are you worried about I was saying you didn't even know existed. What do you mean? We knew that the environment existed. What are you talking about? We didn't know about the mana. If she I'm can just take out the facility, that'd be good enough. That's all I'm suggesting. I, I'm awful not letting anybody come down here either. I don't want it in the wrong hands. Just as much as what, you do. What do we do about the two that are already up there that know where this place is? I saw them when they were in the other room when we were up there before we came down. Maybe we should kill them. We could just tell them. It, um, I don't know. We could tell them anything. We could tell them that we did blow up the Batmana. But if we don't kill them, then they'll come down here again. And then they will bring the bathers. Do they know where it is, I think. We could just, we could just the tell them whatever right. was going down, 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 yeah. going on down here. There's just no mana left. There's no reason to come down here. Unless I don't believe you. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think they would believe that? By this point, you guys make your way and you've reached Manley's office. Do you guys enter? Yes. As you do, you all passively hear the sound of someone talking inside. It sounds angry. Mm. As you're standing outside, you hear, Answer me. I said, answer me. You little fuck. I swear, if you do not respond to this call, I will find you and I will flay your face from your meat. I, um, sword in hand and I'm going to enter the room. As you do, as you enter into the room with your sword unbrandished, you actually see that there's no one inside. The office is empty. There is a stone lying on his desk. It seems to be pulsating with this... Um, it almost, uh, it's like it, it brightens to the sound of the voice as it begins to speak. Almost like it's, uh, synchronized between you. Manly, I will not allow this insufferable. Yeah. Who's there? <laughs> I'm going to, um, pick the stone up. Who just spoke? Who was that? <laughs> Small brush, son of war Stop. Stop. You. You. You hear the sound of crashing and breaking from the other side of the stone. Why did How you do that? did you interfere with our plans yet again? <laughs> Through the power of Tempest. Why is he still talking? I'm gonna hold it closer to Small Brass's mouth. So okay. Out. <laughs> and if you dare come in the path of Tempest again, know you will be crushed and vanquished like the rest. I will not allow this disgraceful interloping. <sighs> It seems a lot of words from a man who hides behind a stone. You know my name. We met in Gutterport, you swine. I'm gonna come up to you, Small Ross's ear. It's Small Ross. His name is Bart of House Ratfolk. I've never been to Gutterport. 
His, 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 his name is... His name is Bart of House Rat Folk. Listen here, Bart of House Rat Folk. <laughs> I have never met you, nor have I been to Gutterport. But if you wish to meet me... My name is Bale Thun of House Rackion! Isn't that who... High Inquisitor and Grand General of old Bela. Well then, know this. Your mana will be destroyed on this eve. You will not touch that mana. I will touch that mana. <laughs> and it will be destroyed. And if you wish... To seek reverence, then come and face me yourself. A small defeat in the war, but I <sighs> will not concede. We already have our placement on Abandol, and we will find a way in sooner or later, and when we do, I promise you, you are not prepared. And you see the stone crumble. He talks a lot, doesn't he? Wait! What placement? Oh, well, that didn't go as I had hoped it would. Who was that? <clears throat> Very angry Bart, tiefling. Bart of rat, House Rat Folk? Oh no, it was just uh, funny to see um, what Small Bros does to me on a daily basis happen to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I challenged him to battle. <laughs> so that may be something we have to cross. That you is, will have to cross that. Uh, that is something something we may have to cross someday, Small Bros. Well, now that the uh, re- the uh, the flag has been raised, and they know, maybe we should get out of here as quickly as possible. We must destroy the mana. Yeah, we got to find the deed first, though. All right. Maybe we should find it. Uh, start searching through the office. Mm. What does what does the deed look like? That what is that is a good question. A large yeah. piece of paper with lots of words on it. Uh. Some signatures. Uh, How many pieces of paper with <laughs> large several? It doesn't take you very long. In fact, you don't even do it. Uh, you have enough time and uh, um, uh, knowledge that by simply get rummaging through his desk, you end up finding what looks like the deed to uh, the <laughs> facility. And you can see that um, the original owner, Geoffrey Lamont, uh, appears to have... Uh, Signed the actual property over to Manly. Mm. Hmm. Well, I guess oh. we're taking this. Is what we need. Yes. Uh, all right. Can I do one last? Um, could I roll investigation just to roll sure can. To see if I can find yeah. anything? Um, Eleven. I'll say. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I won't let you roll. I will, if, if you want to spend, let's say, if you spend at least 30 minutes in there mm-hmm. looking around, uh, you'll find pretty much everything that you would find of interest. Mm-hmm. The room is actually relatively barren of useful information. It is mainly um, office supplies and the general accommodations. It's very obvious that he also, this was his uh, room as well, as his office. So a lot of personal effects of Manly. But you do find that there is quite a bit of information linking Manly and this facility to Old Bay, to uh, consorting with them as far as attempting to create some sort of trade line of mana from the facility to them. You do, however, find one more interesting detail. Okay. <clears throat> In these statements, in these uh, ledgers that talk about the trade of mana being sent back and forth, 
it specifically talks about a single point. A single point of interest. Hmm. And it simply says, the units have been placed amongst the Tuchigal army. How do you, um, how do you spell that? Um, Tuchigal? Yeah. T-U. Okay. C-H-A. C-H-A. G-U-L. G-U-L. <clears throat> army. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna start, um, I'll take the evidence and start storing them into my bag. All right. Uh, it appears that uh, there's some clues here. Possibly where Bail Thun has stored away his units or his people. All right. Well, let's go check on uh, our friends. Wait. And the exact point, the place that it states is let's see here Avondale a place known as the Fort Squall Fort Squall sounds emo wait 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 Mm. you know it'd be fun yes we take the speaking stone with us let small brass have it and periodically, you can check in with Balthoon and torment him. Oh, the stone, the stone crut, like, disintegrated. Oh, he so must have destroyed his. He must have destroyed his, yes. Oh, okay, that does. Mm. I'm, I'm <clears throat> figuring that that would have been a great idea, but Balthoon probably got so aggravated he crushed his um, sending stone. So. <clears throat> mushy, mushy. Missed opportunity. What? <laughs> what did you just say? You almost heard him speak a foreign language. <laughs> that wasn't orcish. It sounded very, very, uh, in this world of Western. Alright. Can we leave now? Alright. Full of, of all the bugs. Before this place blows up, you know? Hopefully before it blows up, yeah. It's going to blow up. As you all make your way back to, um, Brutka and Taku, you notice that they are in the process of um, working on it. They seem to have this symbiotic like relationship where they are both screaming at each other with um, dire hatred. And there's a lot of obscenities and um, um, cuss words being thrown at each other. <coughs> yet you can see that this is kind of just how they work. Hmm. Um, however, you notice that Bruca stops. She stands, sits up, you notice, wipes the, some of the sweat from her brow as she looks over towards you. As you look at her, um, uh, she looks like, even with the bruises and inju- injuries, uh, she's uh, working through this just fine. Um, she appears to have what looks like a set of like workers' overhauls, but she has it down to her waist, tied around. Her upper half appears to be just, um, she has like a crop top. Uh, her abdomen and her shoulders are exposed, uh, covered in what looks like uh, bandages, plenty of scars along her body as well. Uh, she has two very large mechanic gloves. You can see that she's got a tool belt around her waist as well. And her hair is shaved on the sides with what looks like a mohawk that goes back into a ponytail. And uh, her hair color is a um, a very dark sage green. <sighs> oh, sorry. Uh, how can I, uh, what can I do to help you? Huh? What? what? I'm, I'm, I'm just working as fast as I can to get this uh, done. Do, do you need help? No, 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 no. Don't touch anything. If you don't know what you're doing with these things, you can really fuck them up. Hey, then don't mind us. Just keep working. All right. It'll probably be about uh, uh, eight to ten hours. Um, eight to ten hours? So, yeah, might want to get comfortable. What the fuck are we supposed to do for eight to ten hours? We could sleep. Pruka or uh, Taku, uh, do, you, do you know of a squall fort? Does that sound familiar at all? Or fort squall? Um, you know, Taku has this look of confusion, but Brutka puts her, put, uh, raises her finger. Um, yes, uh, fort squall, it's, um, it's on the other side of the strand, uh, the east, uh, southeast. It's, um, 
it's uh, one of the um, strongholds, I think, for uh, the Tuchigo. Thank you. Why? Why do you ask? It was, um... I found some concerning things in Manley's office. And... Bela... Uh, may have forces stashed there. Well, that's a good... His, um... His little dealings with old Bela... Uh, they were... Helping them uh, form an army so they can invade Avondorf. Very not good. Yes. All right. Well, um, I'll get back to work then. All right. We're going to be here for a while. Looks like it. Is there anything anyone wants to do? Sleep, I guess. Sleep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over to Sky. So you know what that fish thing was, right? Like I don't even know what that is. You said it was a ab abel. Yes, it was a it abedith. That prehistoric, um, ancient beings that are said to be older than the gods. So if I were to skin it, what would that do? I would not do that. <laughs> Why not? But it's 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 flesh is made out of a poison. But it's dead. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> I'll take that into consideration. Okay. <laughs> Lavade, please don't touch it. You look like you're going to touch it. <laughs> I might go touch it. Don't touch it, please. It's not good. What about the, I saw that it explode onto Jezebel, I think. And, um, what if I... How is, how is, uh, um, her arm? Is it fine? I haven't really looked, I'm going to be honest. We've had a crazy couple of hours. It's been weird. Weirder than normal, mm -hmm. I think. I suppose, yes. Well, I'm gonna get some shut-eye. I'm quite exhausted. I'm definitely not gonna go skin that thing. <laughs> I'm warning you right now, do not, do not touch it. Okay. She gets up against the wall and she lays down and. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that is it. I'm just going to go try to find somewhere to lay down. Okay. Next to the Abel. As you all <laughs> <clears throat> lay down and get some rest, I'll consider this a log rest for you guys. Sweet. Um, Good news. <laughs> you guys. Gets a well-earned and needed rest. You are all awakened by the sound of Brutka uh, giving a cheer of joy as the sound of the vessel begins to kick on. You can hear the motor and engines revving within the machinery inside. All right, looks like I got her up and running. All right, everyone, let's uh, get inside. This is the biggest one we got. It's still going to be a little bit cramped, but it's better than dying alone down here. So, uh, who's ready? I'm, I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. You guys get up and we'll sluggishly with hazy eyes make your way over to the vessel, and as you guys make your way in, you notice that Taku closes the hatch begins to close it. Alright, so, um, she... Says, is everyone ready? Okay. You notice that she activates a few of the levers. She begins spinning some cranks and some wheels. As the lights then turn on within the vessel, you feel this metallic uh, machinery, uh, this giant metal fish, begin to move through the water. And Loading. as it does, it vacates the facility and begins to float. Yeah, everyone's in. Uh, Bruta, sorry. Um, did you rig the um, facility to... Yeah, I did that while you were all asleep. So, um... um uh, Taku, time? 
Um, I've been counting in my head, but uh, we have probably, maybe, 15 minutes. Uh, okay, everyone, go ahead and hold on real tight. We're going to have to move really fast now. Okay, decompressing. And you see that the bubbles begin to bubble out of the uh, metal fish. And as it does slowly rise, you guys do get this sense of almost like you're moving up too fast. Mm. Um, it's You get a feeling a little queasy. Can I go ahead and get a constitution save from everyone? Ooh, that's a 12. I got it. 12. It's a 20. Yeah. 22. Eight. Yeah, an eight. Yeah. So as you guys are all moving up, um, you guys are fine. Uh, Falner, you're. This is uh, you feel this. It is uh, you feel like your stomach's about ready to come up into your throat. Oh, we have to be going up so fast. Yeah. Yep. Um. Well, if we uh, want to make it a time, yes, yes, we do. <laughs> and as uh, you guys spend the next probably about. 10 minutes rising up from the ocean's floor you finally hear the sound and also the visible light shine through the two eye holes in the front of this uh, large fish as you see the open waves and the fresh bright blue sky just ahead you notice that she begins to uh turn some more cranks and pull it and you feel this uh, metallic fish begin to just move across the water, skipping over the waves and crashing through the water as it continues. It is a bumpy ride as you guys are moving forward. This thing is, it's cranking. It's moving fast. Alright, so we got about uh, five more minutes. Right, Tahu? Five, three, somewhere there, yeah. Um, Okay! Alright, everyone! <coughs> Things might get a little bumpy! And you all begin to move. As you do, you guys give me a perception check. Alright. Good, that is not so high. 17. I got a 9. I think I got the 11. 19. 19. No, 12. I got 12. Okay. Um, 19, you said? 14. 19. Yeah, 19. So oh, 13. 13. Sorry. Anyone beat 19? No. Follow you're the first to see it. As you are going across the surface of the water, and the eyes of the fish are going pff, underwater, above water, underwater, above water. We, we started this. We 100% started this tsunami. And <laughs> you see the island. The one that was the rendezvous point, and you see the sirens call docked along the island. Looks like you guys will make it there probably within the next minute, two minutes. Oh, I we should really hurry. Trust me, I'm going as fast as this thing can go. Um, after about uh, 30 more seconds, you guys all can clearly see the ship in viewpoint. And as the fish begins to go up and under, the fish begins to slow down. And as it begins to slow down, uh, you notice that Brutka goes, uh, there's a vessel uh, up ahead. Uh, is that... Um, that's ours. That's, 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 that's yours? That's my, that's my ship. All right, heading there. I'd like to stay in one piece. And as you guys finally approach and get to the ship, uh, you notice she stops it, the fish halts, and she goes, Taku, the hatch! Let's go! And Taku immediately, as he's old cranking it, oh, I lost count! I think you already lost count a while ago! Alright, let's go! And she, he's like, opens the hatch lid, and she's like, everyone, out, 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 And as you guys all get out, uh, you notice that the ship, um, and you notice the crewmates standing upon the deck looking down at the metal fish. And they're like, you see a berry immediately come over forward and we're like, oh my f- fuck 
fucking god! Oh! As I'm crawling up. <laughs> Barry, I'm, I'm so sorry for what's about to happen. What, what do you mean? You what's probably, about to happen? You should probably hold on to something. Just, just, just brace yourself. <laughs> you notice that as everyone gets on and uh, gets in, you actually watch as Bruka makes her way over. She's the last one onto the fish. You notice that she uh, pulls one final crank, and as she does, you watch as this uh, vessel begins to and start to sink. And as it begins to sink, you notice that she uh, goes to uh, jump. And as she jumps and grabs onto the rope, you actually hear and feel this. And you watch this shock wave ripple across the water. I run to take cover. I go to, I go to grab her and pull her up. Yeah, I'm going to help him. You watch as the vessel, still halfway submerge it's still sinking you watch the water pull and you feel the whole boat move about 30 feet to the side the boat begins to lean forward as this massive pull of water from all directions pulls in and that's when you guys feel This huge beam of water explodes from the location that you all emerged, probably encompassing more than a half mile in width. The water jets more than 300 feet into the air, and as it does, you watch the water begin to spiderweb out. And as it spiderwebs out, you watch it pierce through the sky and what? watch the, the sky begin to no. shatter and break and as pieces of fragmented sky begin to fall down and float from the water you see large pieces of stone what did we do floating chunks of rock and earth begin to raise from the sea and begin to spiral and rotate around this as the water begins to <laughs> begins to spin and you start to see what looks like a massive maelstrom within the water a vortex <laughs> being created as fragmented reality and hovering rock and earth float above the ocean and as this happens, you see the skies immediately darken as purple lightning <laughs> and rain begins to fall. As this happens, you notice that Barry's like, What the fuck did you do? I apologize, alright? We told you to hold on to something. Alright, boys! Let's get the fuck out of here! Show yourself! Save I'm helping with all of it. Yeah. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm going to try helping on the ship. What do I do? What do Just I do? Grab something. I don't know. Grab <laughs> something. As the horrific downpour of just super superboy primed the entire uh, universe. Fucking told you not to blow the fucking mana. Did well, I not? Fine. You're gonna be fine. As this massive vortex begins to swirl around and everyone begins to move quickly and get into position. I'm going to need some checks from people. Oh my god, why did we do this? Why did we do this? First of all, can I get a dexterity save? Okay. Ooh, that is a 10. I got 10. 12. 18. All right. Uh, I still got a 12. Okay. Anyone get below uh, 8? I don't think so. All right. All of you are able to maintain your footing. As the boat begins to violently crash against the waves, you watch as lightning literally ripples through the waters. Streaks of pure raw energy are surging through these tides like webs being split out and spread throughout the surface of the water. You actually watch as pure raw energy and magic breaks its way out like a 
howitzer cannon exploding and crashing down into the waves. This begins to uh, accumulate all within the epicenter of the explosion. The whirlpool begins to go faster and faster. As the boat begins to pull away, the boat is starting to get dragged back no, 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 into no, 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 no. the whirlpool. No. You notice that Barry turns around and goes, All right, you land lovers! If we want to get out of here alive, you better fucking work for it! And you notice that he moves over and he's like, All hands on deck! He, All hands on deck! <laughs> <laughs> it is that the, the door to the lower cabin opens up and Marigold comes out like, What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Now reality's falling apart, mate. You should probably do something. You know what I'm saying? Like, Marigold's like, What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Barry looks at him, Grab the fucking oars! We need a oar at the same time! I'm going to you know reshape it to an ape and then start, like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking going at it. Why is this such a I'll go on the other side and do the same thing. As people move over and they start to... <clears throat> get in power. <laughs> as they begin to uh, get the oars down into the water, as well as get the magic of the sails thrusting you away, you are in a battling uh, confrontation with the tide trying to pull you back into the whirlpool and the boat trying to break the, uh, the cycle. I'm going to need some checks. All right. So who's all rowing? I'll hope. Okay. <clears throat> Jess, what are you doing? Is rowing the only thing that we can do? That is what uh, you aren't rowing, uh, but everyone else is rowing. The sails are ready. Mm -hmm. They're set. Uh, someone does need to be at the wheel. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need a dexterity save from you, and the rest of you, I need a strength saving throw. I'm going to use guidance also. Okay. 25. Oh. So another 10. Okay. Um, 17. Okay. 23. 23. Okay, now time for wild magic. <laughs> what? That's the best kind of magic. You got two. Strength? <laughs> zero strength like, modifier, <clears throat> and I rolled it to the same. Okay. That's why I turned into an ape. As you are all beginning to row your way and push your way out of the um, this vortex as it's pulling you back. You're finally starting to make a break, make way as pillars of fire begin to <laughs> shoot out from the water and as they rise from the depths below, you actually watch as these pillars of flame harden and turn into black obsidian stalactites and they begin to create these jagged rocks and as you are moving these flames begin to explode all around you as you are all pushing your way through as Barry's rowing he's just row row you see one of the pillars come up just blow his oar oh shit <laughs> you know as he turns like keep rowing and he moves over and he grabs another oar and Puts it back into the water as he continues to go. Another round. Dexterity strength, everybody. Natural 20. Yeah, that's an unnatural 20 for me. Dang. Like, so that's cocked a, on us 317 and then landed on 17. So that's a 26. Okay. 27. Oh, shit. 19. 6. <laughs> okay. On he's not even rowing. He's just holding he's onto just, the oar as he's moving like, up. He's on the end of yours. So... Just, <clears throat> It's like that scene from Pirates of the Caribbean with the uh, with the small uh, the small pirate crew from the Pearl being pulled up and brought back down as he's moving. It's almost as though the wave itself is moving the oar now in a rotation. As Jez, as you expertly are spinning the boat, you are avoiding the jagged obsidian rocks that are piercing up and being created out of these pillars of fire as you move and weave your way through. Finally, you feel a massive break as the boat comes over the tip of the edge or the rim of this vortex. You now feel yourself on the straightaway, pushing your way further away. I need one more check from everybody. 24. Four. Um, got, uh, nine. Ooh, 20. Okay. 12. <clears throat> Look at you. Lavende, as you are rowing, you go and you hit, and some sort of magical 
uh, energy <laughs> crackling through the top of the water. You see it hits the ore, and as it does, you almost feel yourself completely levitate off your ore. Your body begins to rise up, and you're on with one arm holding on to the ore as your body is being pulled away. Smavros sees this happening. As he runs over, he grabs you by the arm and he pulls you down to the boat. And as he does, you watch as the magic whips around Smavros's waist and you watch him just get within a fraction of a second, you watch his body almost slingshot into this vortex within the sky. And he is gone. Small, small presses. Uh, there's a the uh, small, small boss just. Uh, I don't think he's alive anymore. Wait, what? He just went in there. He say he as say you, as you look up, you see like basically this image, this small tiny, uh, what almost looks like the size of a bird now, flying through the sky, and as it does, it is hundreds of feet away from you at this point and you watch as his body like going into a vacuum tube <laughs> disappears within the swirling vortex of lightning and storm and at this point the ship finally breaks away onto calm waters until you look back and you see just the raging torrent of energy that is still going on as you watch as those pillars of obsidian, some of them are, are fragmenting out and growing into another uh, um, uh, structures of unimaginable shapes and dimensions and shapes. You actually see that uh, the sea in certain portions of the area begin to freeze over. And as a moment of calm and relief come over everyone, that is when you realize Small Bros is gone. And that's where we're gonna go to break. So, we will be right back, everyone. Enjoy the break.
And welcome back, everybody. Thanks. So. That's what you said? <clears throat> no. That's interesting. No, I love what I said. I said so much more room for activities. When we last left off, <laughs> we all witnessed the Widowmakers escaping the deadly vortex that they created as they sail away from the epicenter of this uh, unnatural catastrophe. I'm going to, like, fall back against the, the side of the ship. They and realize that they are one member short. Yeah. I'm going to lay up against the side of the ship as I wild shape back, or turn off wild shape. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to go, he, he saved me. I don't know why. Why did he? What happened? I started floating, and then he grabbed me, and then all of a sudden he was up there. I don't know what really happened. Well, they've been under the ship or on top? On top. Okay, so I would have seen all that? Yeah. Okay. You saw it happen. I don't know what... Well, we gotta do something, right? You know, so the crew members, uh, everyone's kind of stopping, and everyone kind of completely drenched and soaked from the rain pouring down onto the deck. They turn, and most of them are moving and just looking back towards this storm and this raging magic that is unleashing itself upon the ocean. There's nothing we can do, Volna. What do you propose? I don't know. There's gotta be something we can do. Yes, Barry moves over to fall there and kind of slaps you on the shoulder. Yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do. All right, mate? Hey, love day. You owe him one. Remember that. How do I owe him anything? I mean, like, how do it's I pay him? It's pirate's code, mate. I meant repay him, Barry, not... Like... You'll find a way. One day... Somehow, this life or the next, you'll find a way to repay him. All right? Okay. All right, everyone. It's, uh... Sit me down, let Captain speak. So the crew then turns and I, looks I turn, towards you. I turn and look at Jezebel. Oh, yeah, right. What am I speaking about? Um, you guys have been gone for for, for days, and uh, no one knows what's going on. We all were starting to think that you all. Oh dead. yeah, right, 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 right. So, um, we decided <clears throat> to dispose of of the mana uh, reservoir, as this, as it were. Yes, you know, that marigold cast piece of holy sh. By the nine hells, that's what that was. Yeah, um, Burga, I'm gonna point wherever she's at. Yes, yeah, that she raises her hand as Taku stands next to her. <clears throat> Burga over there decided uh, to rig it for us, and that was, that was uh, her handiwork. Yeah, didn't know that was gonna happen, but. Uh, None of us did. None of us knew that was gonna happen. No, I guess that's. Uh, it'll probably die down, maybe. Yeah, it definitely looks like something that will die down and not have a long lasting effect at all. Definitely. I asked Bruca to do it. Taku looks. The world has been scarred forever. Listen, it was, it was a matter of the mana falling into the wrong hands essentially, and we d decided, as a group, that this would be the best way to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. You know, that so Claudia makes her way forward. Uh, <clears throat> Captain, if I may speak. I know everyone right now is probably very upset, and the shock of Smallfrost is... Probably still very fresh, but if one by one people could please come down to my quarters and I would like to evaluate everyone with us being so close to that magical effect, it could have had other repercussions on our bodies, especially those who were down there. Please, everyone, 
one at a time. I will be down there waiting. You know, so she turns and makes her leaves. You know, as so, uh, Igor makes his way over towards you, Captain. Captain. Igor. I caught plenty of game while you were down there. Gonna uh, get with Fauna, cook it up real nice for the crew. Yeah, well, make sure you make it extra special for tonight. Oi, oi. Makes way over to Fauna. Fauna. What? We got cooking to do. Get your spices. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Before we start moving about like everything's fine, why don't we take a few moments? For small Ross. Yes, you know, so everyone kind of just stops in the calmness of everything. The sound of the waves crashing against the wood of the ship. The sound of the storm in the distance. You... All right. Did you have something to say, Pat? You didn't have to do that. You know it was my request uh, to dispose of it. I Small Ross's death is only on my shoulders, not yours. You're done right, it is. I did fucking say we shouldn't do it. And what do you know? I know we fucking broke the world. We lost a friend. Neither of you looked into his eyes when he did that, though. You know nothing. You run from your problems. That is what you do. Hey, I won't have this bicker in on my ship. Not right now. That's enough. We have other things we need to be doing right now, all right? Start heading towards my room. Why don't you do what bards do, Falna? Write his story. Igor looks towards Falner. You alright? Uh, I can do the cooking. Thank you. Mm. Turns and starts walking away. Fall no one, you take the night in your quarters. Just have some time to process. I think it'd be good in the morning if we all got together and had a little chat about how we're feeling about accountability. I fucking hate that word, by the way, but I just used it. Love and day. Mm. It's not your fault. Yeah, I know. There's other things. I've seen that look before that he had. What do you mean? It's like someone who doesn't know really what's gonna what's gonna happen. You know, it's like looking to. It's like when my my. It was like when my mother and my sister were killed. The look that they had. You know, they didn't really know what was happening. They didn't know why. They're already, they're already gone. No, small Russ is gone. They didn't like him very much, but he didn't deserve that. Nobody deserved that. Lots of people don't deserve to die, but death comes for you same. What if he's not dead? What if he's just up there in pain? What if he can't die now? What do we do with that? What do we What do we do with that? There's lots of what ifs. You could be running lots of scenarios, but you still can't really do anything about it, can you, Lavender? Maybe. We'll find a way. There's always a way. There's. I found my way back. That wasn't. I didn't think that was gonna happen. We could find our way back to Smavros. Never know what can happen. Well, maybe. 
you should do the same tonight and take some time to yourself. Yeah. Last thing I want to hear again is people screaming at each other. I don't like it either. I mean, I'm used to it. I don't mind it, but not right now. Not that kind of screaming, you know? It's not the same. You're right, we're a team. We do things as a team. And we all chose to do that. Didn't have to, but we didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't think that Smothrust was going to just fly into the air like that. Yeah, I didn't think that the sky would be coming and uh, crashing down on us, but here we are. You know I really did go to the Feywild on the ship, right? I believe you. That happened. I believe you. Smavros saw me do that. Saw me open the portal to it. Barry was there too. I told him to not tell you, but then I felt like I should. You told Barry not to tell me something. I did, yes. I didn't... There was a lot going on at the time, and I didn't want it to... I didn't want to involve anyone who it didn't really affect. Like, they just happened to be there. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day I can show you how to do it. That I'm not crazy. That I'm really... Bullstead is where I, I should be, even though I was told not to go there. Like, I'm... I'm and I want to do it before that happens to me. I don't really think you're crazy, Lavender. Everybody does, you, you know? see like, things other people can't. I do that too sometimes. But I need a drink, so I'm going to be in my quarters. If you need anything, then mm. you can probably find me a way As there. you turn around, you notice that Barry's already standing there with a half jug of rum. You're incredible, Barry. Barry, I... Oh, no. I, I told her about what I told you not to tell her. Maybe you can... I know, it's right here. I just <laughs> give you go. Yeah. Wait, how long were you standing there? I the whole time. Creepy. Maybe you can kind of better explain it. I feel like she deserves to know as the captain, you know? I'm not going to lie to you, love day. I'm not quite sure what you experienced because... Um, it was a little extreme. It was a little out there but um, I want to go drink myself until I pass out oh. yeah, maybe I should go down to Claudia I uh, that magic hit me and that's why small Ross grabbed me so maybe I should go down you notice that Barry looks over towards the wheel because like is that all right, Hakan? You mind if I just drink until I piss myself in my sleep? And you know, Hakan's like, "Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, go on. I can take care of shit." I'm going to my quarters. I'm going to go down to. Love day. As you go down to your quarters, um, <clears throat> you notice that Claudia's door is open. And she stops and looks at you and she goes like, You, I don't care what you say, you're getting in here and you're having an examination because everyone else keeps ignoring me and is giving me... I, I was going to come in anyway. I, I was hit by the man. Inside! Okay, I'm going to walk in. As you walk in, all right. I don't know what happened down there. She begins moving through and grabbing files off of her uh, shelves. First of all, there was like a two-headed shark. That was kind of scary. Um, people were kind of turning into like gooey messes. They, we, we, we couldn't save anybody. It was a, it was a really bad time down there. There was mana. I went to a different. I saw a giant fire monster. She takes her finger and puts it on your lips. Stop. Stop what? I just lay down. <laughs> Went to lie down. Is that the no, is that the motion of the ocean? Okay. As you lie down on your back, she brings her her hand over and she puts it over your chest as she's uh, checking your vitals. And as she does, she's. Why are you looking at me like that? She takes her 
hand and sort of almost presses down into your stomach. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to give you a little sedative, and this is going to make you go to sleep. Okay? Um, you're not going to wake up for the rest of the night. Trust me, this is very powerful. Uh, why okay? are you doing this? Um, I need to do an examination, but you'll need to be asleep for this. But I was only hit by the magic. Why are you... Why are you putting me to sleep? So that it's not painful. <laughs> Jesus. What do you mean by that? I'm going to... perform a slight operation to make sure you are okay. I trust you and I want you to trust me. Okay? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, here. Now, she pours off some, some powder into her hand. Open up. Uh. She grabs back your head and she <laughs> right into your mouth. All right, swallow that. I'm going to... Okay, now lie down. I'm going to lie down cautiously. As you lie down, it doesn't take very long and you feel your eyes getting heavy and you just sleep. As this happens, <clears throat> you notice that <clears throat> or you don't notice Claudia leaves her room heads upstairs and knocks on Jezebel's cabin door come in yes that Claudia opens the door um, captain Claudia I need to have a word with you downstairs in my cabin about Lavendae what about Lavendae um something's wrong with him we... I want you down there when I do this, or if any of the other crew members want to see this. I set down my drink. And I pick it back up, and I'm taking with me. <laughs> <laughs> As you both head down into the lower cabin, uh, she looks towards you. Should we get Kaz? He is the first mate. Kaz is going through something right now. I kind of think he should have some peace of mind for the rest of the night after everything that happened, so... As you wish, Captain. Um, and what about Falner? We don't need to worry about Falner right now. Okay. Just you, then. She takes you into her room, and she closes the door. She closes the door. <clears throat> you see Lavende lying down, and he looks dead. So, please tell me he's asleep right now. You didn't kill him? I did not kill him. He is... He is asleep. Um... Put your hand over his chest. I'm sorry? What? Put your hand over his chest. I, like, hand her my drink. She grabs the drink. Oh. It's not that bad. Put your hand... Your warm hand onto his cold chest. Ugh. And you don't feel anything weird. In fact, the fact that you don't feel anything is what's weird. Alright, so I felt my fair share of dead bodies, and this feels like a dead body right now. He so. doesn't have a heartbeat. Exactly. So what did you do to him? I didn't do anything to him. This is what he was like. Before I put him to sleep. So. There's, that's not possible. Here. You notice that she moves over and she grabs a scalpel. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to open him up. Uh, I want you to be here to see this. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. I, I have done this before. Um, it's very safe. Alright, so here's all I'm going to say right now. He's dead. He's not... He's very not, dead. He's not dead. I don't think you need to be doing any autopsies in the ship right it's now. It's not an autopsy. Jez, just let's... Let's try this, okay? Seat yourself on this. Alright. He'll make her guide the pain. Alright. She shakes the scalpel, puts it towards the collarbone, the center, the clavicle, and she goes in a straight line all the way down to his navel. 
is that she then grabs what looks like this metal spreader and she puts it into the flesh and you what? watch her oh my God, that's disgusting slide his skin open like a shirt right. so wait you're telling me he's alive while you're doing this he is alive I... all right so when you're done being a fucking weirdo i'm gonna have to have, hold you accountable for killing lavender you know that he's right not dead all right so have fun playing your weird fucking game with his organs look and as you look down, you see what looks like mushrooms growing through his rib cage. Oh my god, I didn't think it could get any more disgusting. That's not supposed to be there. No, no, I, I would imagine okay. not. Okay, now it's one more layer. <laughs> as you hear the bone crack and crunch through the breastplate. <laughs> 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 well, you are expired. <laughs> I am expired. Uh, all right, that's enough. There's no way he's alive during this. Okay. And as the chest plate, uh, chest cavity fully opens up, you see the inside. His internal organs are there. Um, but they're littered and filled with mushroom growth and fungi. Uh, his liver seems to be completely covered in what looks like fuzz and, uh... uh what the fuck did you do to him? I didn't do anything, remember? Alright, alright. Well, who are you, really? <laughs> I started back up towards the door. Who are you? I'm, I see you now. What was this weird shit you are doing with my crew? She grabs a vial. Ah. Ah, don't. It. Don't. Put it down. Put it down. I, she's gonna sit it down. Listen. Put your hand by his mouth. I've touched enough dead bodies for put one Put your hand by right? his mouth. What Captain. What about this gets you off exactly? I'm not. The I'm... only thing I'm about to do is we'll get some of my crew so we can put you in some shackles, all right? Captain, put your hand by his mouth. Get in the corner. She walks to the corner. Stay in your corner. I'm gonna... Oh. You put your hand over his mouth, and as you do, you feel the hot what breath. What the fuck? He's alive! Do you remember how when he threw up those mushrooms? Yes. Something is going on with him, and look at his heart. I don't want to. As you look over towards where his heart should be, what you see instead is a large weave, a ball, a thorned briar. Oh, what the fuck? And inside this ball, you see what looks like a glowing almost a uh, radiant green light. Claudia. Claudia. What the fuck is this? Claudia. I don't know, but this explains some things. Every single major organ is here. His liver, his kidneys, stomach, lower intestines, all of it. It's all here. But his heart is missing. It's been replaced with this. It, Looks like a seed or something. Something is growing in him. Uh, alright, I've seen enough, I've heard enough, alright. I need you to just put him back together, alright, the way he was. I will. I can't believe you've done this to a living person, first of all. That's real fucked this up. This is that's what's, coming from me. This is surgery. Alright. <laughs> Great. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give you like 10 minutes or something. How long is it gonna take to put him back together? Because I'm gonna come back in and make sure he's still one piece. I'm going to put him back together. I'm going to use magic to heal his wounds and mend them together, okay? Time, woman, what time, how long? Give me ten minutes. I'll be back in ten minutes. Yes. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'm going straight to Kaz. And as you leave, you see, you as you turn and sh close the door, you just watch her with her bloody, like, leather gloves, just... <sighs> and begin... <laughs> putting the flesh and bone back together. Oh, my 
and Kaz. you make your way to Cass's door. Kaz. Kaz. Uh, Kaz. I, yes, yes, yes. Mm, open the door. All right, Claudia. Claudia is some sort of fucking weird plant necromancer. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but we need to get her off the fucking ship, dead or alive, right now, right? So I need you to help me. What are you even talking We need to kill about? this woman. What? Why? She killed Lavender. Day. She reanimated his corpse and filled him with mushrooms, all right? I just saw it. Are you drunk? Cut, yes, but it's real. Come with me. <laughs> okay, just let me put some clothes on really Doesn't quick. clothes don't matter anymore. We have a, we have Fine. a fucking freak on board. I walk over there with my shirt off. No, just come with. I don't care. We have a freak on board. We need to get okay. rid of her. Okay, so I walk over with just my <clears throat> pants on. Okay. Okay, so I what's on? It's going to be drawing, right? But you really need to watch your drinking. No, I, all right, I know it's a problem. I'm working on it, okay? So I'm going to open this door. You're going to see Love and Day. He's ripped open all okay. the way, all right? He's filled with stuff. All right. All right, so try to not puke. I'm kicking uh, the door open. As you kick the door open, Claudia quickly swings around. You see her covered. She has what looks like a face mask on, covered in blood. Le- her leather gloves are just lacquered with blood. Um, you also notice that she, her apron is covered in blood. You see Lavende lying on the uh, table. He is completely still open. His rib cage is put back, but you can see what looks like um, his intestines, uh, organs completely exposed. And Claudia is, is is picking mushrooms out of his body. All right, necromancer, this ends now. When I summon my hex blade. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm I'm not a necromancer. I I am a I am a what doctor. What about plant, plantomancer? Okay. I don't know she what you're called. She had too much to drink. That is disgusting. Why did you bring me in here? Claudia, what's happening with Lavender? Let's go. One on I'm one. trying to do a diagnosis here, but I, it's, it's hard because Chez thinks I'm trying to kill him, or I already did kill him. You did I, kill him. You reanimated him. He's, 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 not, he's not dead. You can, he's, he's breathing still. He's breathing. I just, I'm just going to kind of like put my hand up to his face and... And you feel hot breath. Just, just let Claudia do her job. Oh, yeah, she's doing a fine job, isn't she? Look at him, he's filled with mushrooms. Okay. Mm. Oh, all right, um, we're going to leave you alone, Claudia. Are you crazy? I'm going to close the door. Are you crazy? No, I'm completely... I'm bringing my sword back up and I'm starting to go for the door I'm again. Just, stop it! <laughs> stop it! She's going to do this to all of us. She's going to fill us all. With mushrooms. You, okay. You reek of alcohol. Let's. I know, that's every night for me. Okay, let's go back up to your cabin and let's let you finish off whatever bottle you started. And we'll it's right fun. here. Okay, fantastic. I'm glad you have that right now. Let's just. Let's Are we killing her or not? Can we just go back on deck? Please, it's been a very long day. She's, it's fine. All right, I just need you to tell me you saw that. I saw that. So if we wake up in the morning and Kaz is still dead. I'm right here. Kaz, Lavin, Falna, Lavende, Lavende is still dead. He's not dead. He's breathing. I'm creaking the door back open. I'm looking in. I, as you creak the door back open, you can see what looks like her, uh, well, um, putting the skin back over and she looks like she's rubbing some sort of ointment onto the wound. Oh, she's rubbing his body now, guys. Just, just, just. She stops door. and like turns back and looks towards just, the door. Just, yes, is everything fine? It, just, just, I, I'm just trying to take care of her. Just closes the door. C- can, can we go? Please, just go back up on deck. I, it's... Have you never seen a physician before? I've never seen that. You, was, you tell me you've seen that. Have you never gotten stitches or anything? You can equivalent them to stitches. <laughs> just, just, just. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I am quite used to tearing people in half, Kaz. Don't get me wrong. I've never seen anything like that. There before. are people who put people back together that, you know, you cut open. Mushrooms. Well, that is odd. Yeah. I will admit that. But it's lo- dead gold. There, there is a lot of things that happen tonight that we can't quite explain. You have a point. I'm gonna dematerialize. All right. My next blade. So, um, why don't we go back on deck 
and we can split that bottle and just let Claudia do her job. You drive a whole bargain, but you've convinced me somehow. <laughs> but we come back in the morning and we check. We will check. And if this is still fucking weird, you let me kill her. Yes, if, if she's down here parading with Lamde's body like a puppet, <laughs> I'll mm. let you cut her open. Great. Lead away. All right. We'll go back to my quarters. All right. As you guys head back up to the deck and head back to your quarters, you eventually both share the rest of that bottle as Jezebel passes out on her bed, gripping her bottle and her sword. tuck her in and um, stumble my way out. And as you stumble your way about, you make your way down, and everyone turns in for the night. The next day arises. Mm. <clears throat> you all awake. Jez, you are the first to wake with a pounding headache. Mm. And a full bladder. I don't care, Lava Day. I'm gonna run back down to where Lava Day was. Alright. As you make it up and you make your way down to uh, the uh, room, you open the door to see Lavende stretching his arms and waking up. It looks as though she took Lavende and put him back into his room. Do you know where I got the? You don't have a you don't have a scar. Oh, there is no scar. There's no scar. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, just I don't really remember getting back in my room, but. Uh, yeah. You look. You don't look good. I, I don't feel good. Kaz, um, you hear the conversation as you open the door. Oh, and what do you remember about last night? Claudia time? actually comes out I as re- well. I remember going to sleep. <clears throat> Claudia put like powder in my mouth. I went to sleep. She did what? I don't walk out. She put powder in my mouth. <laughs> she knocked you out. I let her. She told me you she was. Let, she let. She told me she was going to do it. She didn't just go. You know, it was. I feel yes. okay though. Claudia comes out of her room. She looks towards uh, you. Uh, Lavende, is uh, are you feeling okay, Lavende? Yeah, I feel I feel fine. You're feeling fine? Do you mind if I just do a quick check? I'm just gonna check your temperature and. Uh, uh, yes. Is that okay? That is fine. I thought we did that yesterday. Um, I did, but I just want to keep checking and see if things Wait, are changing. You did that to him under the guise of a temperature check. No, no, no what? No, she she just wanted to check me. Do you me know over. what she did to you? No. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what she did she, to you. She, she takes a, <laughs> she takes a, well, it's like a piece of paper, almost like a, almost like a talisman, like a uh, talisman strip. She puts it over your forehead, and as she does, she moves a uh, somatic gesture across the uh, paper, and it begins to what did you do to glow, me? and it gives her a specific n- number. What did you do to me? What does she mean? Okay. All right, all right, That's all right. So normal? So imagine this, okay? So you can split down the middle, right? Right here. She takes two metal things. Never seen this in my life, by the way. It was, fuck, it was interesting. Props them in. Spreads you open. I don't like to be spread. You were spread open right in the chest. She was digging in there. I got some sort of fucking watermelon. I, I performed an operation on you, um, Lavende. Why did you do that? Because your heart isn't beating. Yeah. And what do you mean? Not, the, the, now, now that you think about it, you... You don't even know what a heartbeat feels like. What do you mean a heart is not beating? It's not pumping with blood. As she grabs... she moves over and she grabs her hand she puts it over her chest and as you feel her chest you feel boop, 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 boop. is there something inside of you that's my heart is there something inside of you now feel yours and she turns it and puts it on yours and there's nothing i think you you should do that operation on yourself, but I don't think that's normal. This is normal. Oh, uh, so, Lavender, I'll tell you, it's not normal. You're uh, filled with mushrooms, mate. Okay. Yeah, I threw them up. You guys were there. I did it in your room, remember? I, are you trying to that say... That was really weird. She had you open. There was no heart, but there was a, just a ball of thorns and green light. That's not normal either. There was a I lot know, of mushrooms in you. There was a lot, man. Yeah. Yes, your um, certain organs were completely covered with mold and fungus. <laughs> Um, I saw at least seven different species of fungi. Oh, 
best. I'm assuming that that's not how it's supposed to be. I've never looked inside of myself, so... Or inside of anything else, really. Except mm -hmm. for... No, unless you are a... Um, well, a corpse or a, some sort of plant, then you shouldn't have fungus growing out of you. I mean, do, do you remember when I said the plant, like, you remember that? You said a tree went inside of you, I didn't mm -hmm. think. Literally, I didn't see a did tree. I, did I turn into a tree? No, a you tree are now? not a tree. No, no. I, it, it could be whatever you found it, it could cause that. Remember, I did, I remember when I said, like, before I threw up, I, I went to the Feywild and nothing, like, kissed me? Do you remember that? I remember that. Do you think that it did something to me? I didn't throw up mushrooms before that. Lavender, you, you actually look like you've never had a heartbeat, so I don't think that she or it or The way you're acting, it sounds as though you've never had a heart. Or it's been so long that you've forgotten what it's like to have one. Is is there a way I could could I do a, a like a knowledge um, uh, arcana or um, uh, intelligence check to know what a fey wild what the fey wild is? Um, you know what the fey wild is. Cool. Um, you're very well that it can it has on many occasions changed people that stay there too long. Uh, in fact, his arm, um, Lavende's arm, is uh, clear evident. It is permanently changed from his residency within the Feywild. Okay. The spiral of patterns engraved within the skin, the um, uh, almost fairy glitter that's uh, um, that glimmers in the sunlight, and the purpled hue to it. So, so what do you think has it? I. Uh, what do you think happened to? I'm not entirely too sure. Wild magic, um, particularly with the Fae in the wild, it can change people. And this could be a permanent condition that you have to live with. Uh, I mean, I've been living with it for years now. So I, I just want to monitor it and make sure that you um, remain healthy. It looks like your temperature is normal, which is strange. Um, so, I'm going to... Uh, Check in with you daily, okay? Okay. Um, Can Lavender not die? I don't think there's a way for us to test that safely. We can't have it. Oh, safely, alright. <laughs> I don't want to die. Speaking of which, um, Small Rust, he's not. He didn't come he back. He did not come back, no. Um, I think Fulner is. Um, I think he is sulking in his room. You guys have probably been. You probably have been playing music, or uh, somber song, pretty much throughout the night. I didn't realize he liked his company so much. I'm, well, I, I'm going to I get, think he admired him. Can I? I'm going to get up and go into his room. Okay. And as you go into his room, somewhere in another scene. So everyone who is watching tonight. In today's episode this is going to be something that i will be doing um periodically throughout the episodes where i will transition to a scene somewhere else not involved in the party this will be a uh solo scene where sometimes i will basically have rp moments with myself this will give you guys a different perspective of the story um, and it will give the players a different perspective as well but their characters in game will not have the knowledge of Moving forward, I will just simply say somewhere else in another scene. Interesting. <clears throat> High within the floating cities of Neve, Larissian is currently undergoing his duties, checking through the monotonous detail of looking at every potential candidate that wants to become an apprentice and study under the great wizardry schools within this city. As he is diligently at his work, wishing that it would end, sound of his chamber door bursts open. As the door bursts open, a young elf storming his way in, his blonde hair almost enraged with fury flying behind him. 
I demand this now, Larissian! It is my right to have my glory! How dare you! How dare you and all of the Covenant deny me it! I've made my oath! That is enough, young one. You will not speak to me like that again if you wish to keep your position and rank. Do you understand me? This has never been done before. I have... I want... I want my oath. I want to satisfy my oath. He killed my brother. I Oof. understand your pain. Listen. <clears throat> You will have your quarry, but I have already promised um, another comrade of mine that he will not be touched until the final hours of his life. His natural life? Yes. After all, you are an elf. You live for thousands of years. He's a mere halfling. He has... 250, 300, maybe? You will outlive him, and on his deathbed, you can go and take your quarry. F fine. But I want... I want my mark of vengeance now. Very well. That I will do. After all, if you've taken the oath, I cannot deny you the mark. Yes. Lucian opens a drawer and pulls out a fine, what looks like an ivory arrow. It's filled with what looks like green and black thorns wrapping around all the way to the broadhead. Dalamar Shong Elasore. As he blows onto the arrow, you see a magical rune begin to whip around the twine of thorn. Here, there is your mark of vengeance. Give it to him if you must, whenever you wish. It is your mark to give. Then I will do it now. Larissian stands up, moves over to the window, undoes the hatch, and opens it. Be my guest. The young elf makes his way over, grabs the arrow. Tenarius, are you sure you want to do this now? Yes, for my brother. He pulls the arrow back in his bow, and fires it out the window. Meanwhile, on the ship. Continue. I'm opening the door to fall in this room. Okay. I'm See going Fall there in there playing a somber note. I'm gonna go up to him and I'm going to hug him. What, what, what are you doing? It is okay to be sad. You don't have to sit in here by yourself. I'm not. You are. There's nobody else in here. And they said you've been in here. They, you know, they told me I'm dead, right? Just keeps telling me I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm here. You're not dead either. I'm sorry, wh what happened? Small Frost isn't coming back. I'm told that I'm dead. But I don't... You're dead. No, I'm not. I'm alive. There's a lot of things You're happening. You're not alive. There's a lot... You know, at this point, I don't really know, but the, ma the fact of the matter is, it's okay to be sad. Just come out with us, okay? It's Jez and Kaz, are you guys also in the room? I'm still... I'm still in the room that... Uh, Lobney's room or wherever we were. Okay. You are our friend, and we've lost one of our other friends. Oh, no. Come be with the rest of us. That's not... I think... I'm gonna hold out my hand. I want oh. you... Oh. As a Widowmaker to come out with us. 
Oh, I love him too. <clears throat> Kick off me bed and join the others up, up on deck. I think we're in the room right across. Join the others in the room right across. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to follow behind him. Right. I don't want him to be alone. Ah. <clears throat> How are we feeling today, Fauna? I'm, I'm fine, Captain. So what do we do now? Where do we go? Well, we have a uh, we have a few things to acquire. For, uh, this is it worth for more ships, more crew, oh, right? Yeah. What about all, all the gold that you had? Have you seen if that is in there? I saw you scooping it. I'm gonna take my jacket off. Okay. And I'm gonna slowly. Turn it upside down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing happens. Oh no. <gasps> oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I'm gonna put it back on. I'm yeah. gonna start like digging through the pockets. Then your arms go through. It been? feels as though, like, you almost feel as though it's, um, you need a little bit more length. Something longer than your arm. Something closer to the bottom of your jacket. Oh, look, come here. Whoa. Uh, so, if, uh, if I like, held on to your feet or something, I'd put you in my pocket. Would you be okay with that? I would not. Damn. Why, do you need somebody to go in there? I saw you scooping I, stuff I up. I feel like I just go? need to reach a little further and my arm's what not are you trying long to get? Do you want me to try? What am I doing? Wait, what's happening? I, I don't, don't know. I just want to... I can't what? reach the bottom of my pocket. What? You're trying to reach just the bottom of your pocket? You're not looking for I'm taking my jacket off. Take it off? Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to stick my whole arm in there and hold it up. As soon as you take it off, you can't put your arm through it. Oh. I'll put it back on. Alright, so I have to work for it to work, okay? For what to work? You're being very strange right now. Do you... My whole future depends on this, okay? If this, if I can't get my gold, I'm going to jump off just, this ship and I'm going to sink to the bottom try of the to sea. I'm going to die there. Listen, just try to concentrate on the gold, right? And then reach in and see yourself grabbing it and then pull it out. What's this manifestation shit that you're trying to preach to me right now? Some... Okay, I can't use a Trust me. Try it. I feel so stupid. I'm gonna put my arm in the pocket. I'm gonna close my eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna imagine my arm getting longer. <laughs> and as you do this, uh, you just feel stupid and nothing happens. <laughs> However, you move your arm around while you're in there and you feel your fingertips touching something solid. At the like, you just your fingertips. You feel like if it was, if you were able to get something just a little bit longer and closer to the floor, in there, you may be able to get in. I can. Tr- whatever you're doing, I can try to help. Do you have? Do a- I have to crawl in there? Uh, do, no. you, do you have a tail? I'll tell you what. My everyone here. Everyone can gold. give me an intelligence check. Okay. I think that's a five. I'm not using that type very Ten. Uh, Fifteen. I literally... Natural know. twenty with twenty-one. That's okay. Cool thing. Falder, you got have a spark of a genius here. A little epiphany here. Why doesn't she just use her leg? I have to keep the jacket on. Oh. Uh, what? Why don't you use your leg? Obviously. What kind of suggestion is that? Obviously. Just... Use my leg, and then what I'm gonna grab the gold with my toes? Right. You know how long we'll be here? Also, I have to have my coat. Aren't you ambidextrous? Do you try it? How? So you would take your jacket, because it's a trench coat, and you would just put your leg and step through. While I'm wearing it. Yeah, like you're just gonna step like you're gonna step onto your jacket. work. 
So do you do it? I want to try, but I'm not picturing this. Okay. So as you stand there and you lift your leg up and you step into your jacket, you guys watch Jezebel disappear. Oh, you bitch. Fell not what'd you do? You tricked me. I didn't do anything. Jezebel, you pop, bamf, and you reappear, and you are standing in a vault room filled with gold. You see the statues and the gems and the jewels everywhere. Um, it's this, it's a very long, narrow corridor. It almost looks like that scene from Adam's family when the room spins around and you see that long hallway of gold and gems. I've never been so happy and so upset at the same time in my life. Where is the exit? Oh my god, why did you do this to me? Are you kidding me? What did you get on your intelligence check? A 15? 15! Okay. So if your left leg got you in. What? Your right leg will get you out. How? What? <laughs> you step into your coat, obviously. Am I still wearing the coat? Yeah. What is this? Okay, so I'm inside the coat wearing the coat. <laughs> yep. That I got into with my left leg. Yep. So let me step back into it again with my right leg. Yep. All right, I'm grabbing an armful of gold. Where's my crown? I'm gonna put my crown back on. I'm gonna step, this is so ridiculous. I'm gonna step through the right pocket. As you step through the right pocket, you, and you pop back up on the boat. You guys see her reappear and coins just land on the ground as she stands there holding gold. Oh, it appears, it appears that it worked. Well, Thunder was right about something. Well, you'd be quite surprised how twice, that twice in two days. That's kind of. I don't understand this jacket, <clears throat> but I love it. It's got some sort of enchantment on it. Obviously. I was beginning to think that that coat had a direct deposit into Finley Gold's account, maybe, and he just <laughs> cleaned you out as soon as you were putting it in. Um. Well, I will say, I have this corridor, and there's lots and lots. Uh, Little, like more than what I put in. No, it was just what you've put okay. in. Okay. This is a big, it's a big space. Lots of room for more. It's quite, like, it is quite in the coat. Yeah. Can we go in? I don't think it works that way because you have to have the jacket on still to get out. You can go in with me. Here, go for the Hold that. Oh. All right, I'm gonna put my leg through it and so see if you try fit his leg. I'm gonna try to put my leg in. You try to put your leg in? I'm picturing the dumbest fucking shit right now. As you go to put your leg through, nothing happens. Oh. Your leg glue goes in, but nothing happens. So interesting. What, what if I turn into like to a like a small animal and then you held me and then you did it? I turned into a cat. Let's try Not it. the one that you killed, by the way. I what? remember. What are you I talking was there. about? Alright, be cat now. Be cat. Okay. Let's I'm, go. I'm gonna like jump. And then, like, wild shape into cat. Okay, he wild what shapes a mare. What do you look like? I want to be... I'm going to uh, be all gray with, like, white stripes. Uh, that's my cat, by the way. Oh, it, it looks like my actual cat in real life. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. All right. With these bright green eyes. All right, I'm holding on as a cat. Okay, and put you step leg, through. Put my leg in the pocket. And you, pff, you bam through with him. I'm going to kick one of the <laughs> the pieces of gold and then start kicking it around. Alright. I'm going to look around for a miniature crown, like a little tiara. You got any of those in there? Yep. <laughs> Alright, we, we need to prove a point, okay? Boink. I'm going to pick it back no. up. I'm going to step through the right pocket. Alright, and you come back out. Uh, uh. Okay, so we have the gold still. That's good. We'll so, down. so you have I'm your own personal... <laughs> A little, you know, personal vault <laughs> in your coat. That's have. pretty. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Do you like my crown? You guys my hear? Hey, someone yell down the stairs. Did you hear Barry? Oi! You all right down there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, fine. food's ready. If you guys want to come up and eat. All right, we'll be we'll be right up. I'm gonna take the gold back from Falder and put it back in my pockets. All right, so we eat. We figure out our next plan of attack. Oh, am I keeping this? 
Oh. We don't want to. We don't want to show anyone this. We don't want anyone. We don't want anyone to know. We can't trust anyone. What the fuck, Claudia? She's standing right there. And I guess she has to die. Do we have to? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't. I, 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 I can just pretend it's I didn't see anything. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get food. <laughs> I'm watching you though. She turns and starts walking up the stairs, and she. Double She's takes. probably gonna tell someone. <laughs> Good news is, though, I'm the only one who has access to it. Well, you have it all. Don't ever take it off. Or just leave it off. I'm gonna sleep in this thing. So I'm gonna leave my body again. Oh, you could just sleep in gold. Literally in gold. I saw there's a lot of gold in there. I could do that. I was swimming in it before. Bed of gold. Sun's nice and shiny. Yes, if anybody else hungry, I'm really hungry. Let's get something to eat and we can talk about um, our next move. And you can tell us what all the items did? You said that you could do that, right? Yeah, I could tell you what they do. Kaz, you're cool. As you all turn and make your way up the stairs, you guys come out to the deck. Cool winds. It's a cloudy day, actually. Looks like you might have a little slight drizzle later on. But you smell food. Hot food. It's like Yigor's made breakfast for everyone. And as you guys look over towards the steam rising off the food, you guys make your way <laughs> as an arrow right into Folder's chest. <gasps> oh, 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 alert! Everyone! We're under attack! Who is shooting arrows? Man the cannons! Everyone everyone like like freaks out, looks at it. You have this Alter. arrow stuck In, okay. inches above your heart. I'm going to go can I go like try to take care of it? As you go oh, 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 be careful, go, 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 go. As you move over and you grab the arrow, um, and you uh, grip it, you realize that your hand gets cut from it. As you look down at the arrow and you realize that there are thorns wrapped around it, and the arrow has gone all the way into his chest, and the barbs are pierced out. Is that what, is this what happened to I, me? Is this why I'm right? I don't know. I'm doing a thing, and I'm going to go up to the crow's nest. Son. As you guys look around, there's no ships. There's no land. You are in open sea. As, well, I do now. as everyone is mobilizing and looking, it is excruciatingly painful. It's like being poked with a hot iron sear. <laughs> you look over towards him, and he, you can't see it because his hands, he's trying to stop Fa it. Fauna, let, let go. <coughs> uh, uh, Claudia, Claudia. You hear Claudia coming up and says, what's going on? I, he just, oh, it fucking hurts. Just stop. How did you get shot by an arrow? Oh, no. Lavender, did you do this? Why, why are you looking at me? I don't. Why would I do that? I gave him a hug. You saw that? All right, hear me out. Hear me out. Magic arrow, right? There's, all right, all right, all right. No all right. Oh, fucking take it out okay. of me. Hey, um, folder, lay down, lay down. All right, move your hand. You're gonna have to move your hand. <laughs> as soon as he moves his hand, you watch the arrow go further in. Oh no. Oh, oh you notice that Claudia immediately pull, oh, takes the top of the arrow and she grabs it, and as she grabs it, she tears open the opening of your shirt, you watch as the thorns around the arrow shaft begin to like a snake and spiral around his chest. And as they do, you see what looks like a knotted, almost like a marksman's cross made of thorns over his heart. And as it does, you watch it begin to glow bright gold. And as it happens, you see elvish lettering begin to spiral around the thorns as you hear only you fall there. You are my quarry. For every second of every day, I may fire an arrow to find your heart. You are my quarry of every year and every night. If I so wish, my arrow will find your heart. Always fear me, for I am at every window. I am at every open sky. Who's there? What? You are my quarry. Oh, fucking you show yourself. The arrow disintegrate. 
Could I read the Elven? That yes. Uh, the Elven uh, literature looks like it's... Um, you immediately pick it up as not transcribed as um, text. It's more... Um, uh, it's... It's spell jargon written in Elvish. So it was... Um, it's more or less like the verbal uh, commands of a spell. Could I um, roll like an arcana or like a... I would say with your... Um, uh, because of the memories of the king that you just had, mm. you are very well aware of this. Although it is definitely different than what he knew. Mm. But this is ancient magic. Ancient elven magic. This was a something that they would instill on the greatest enemy of their foes. Someone who had slighted an elf so immense that they would basically make a oath of vengeance through a spell that once placed on the target would never leave them until they die. Hmm. Once placed upon their target, they will always know where they are. They will always be able to track them. They can never get away from them. And any arrow that they fire from their bow will find the heart of their target. Fon, who are you talking to? Uh, I just heard a voice in my head. And it said something about being my quarry for life. And something about shooting arrows at me if any, any minute of the day. And I guess I'll get hit with an arrow. <laughs> the fucking okay. coward. Who did you piss face off? me like a man. I mean, who haven't we made upset, um, to be fair? A fauna in particular. Fucking hell, it hurt so bad. What did you do? Oh. I don't fucking know. Wait. Wait. Wait, wait, Can wait. Two two together? You know exactly what this is. <sighs> no. Put my I'm just trying to enjoy my breakfast. Didn't, and some, just... didn't some elf swear to kill you because oh, no. you killed Take him off his the friend? Ground. Okay. Oh. Hold my hand out to Fauna. You mean the fucking little git that try to wake us up with noise to our throat? Yeah, so on. So, Fauna, it looks like, um, well, the both of us have killed somebody that we regret. Don't worry. He's gonna kill you on your deathbed. He just said he was gonna just start th sh sh uh, throwing arrows at me any minute any of the day. When we were on Eve, oh, fuck. I had Arisian promise me that you would not die by his hand until your deathbed. What is his name? Lorisian? That's the person who's saving your life. Oh, what is the name of the one I don't shooting know. shooting arrows at me? But you killed his brother. I can vividly remember, <clears throat> I will fucking kill you, I will fucking kill you, you killed my brother. That sounds vi vi vaguely familiar. <laughs> oh, I do want to say, it sounds like, maybe... You, you killed somebody that was laying on the ground defenseless, that small Ross was standing on top of, and it just turned out to be... Which was an The brother of the person that probably just shot you. Just didn't mean to kill him. Can, I think it's too late for that. Can, can, we, can I just talk to this person and humbly apologize? It's too late for that. Is you shot with the mirror? Do you I'm not? going to tell you, I'm going to be straight with you. If every time I have breakfast I'm going to get shot with an arrow, I'm going to be very vividly pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's really not much I can do. I just have to suck it up, I guess. I mean, we might, maybe there's a way to break it. Okay. Possibly. Wait, dies. wait, what would happen if I were to kill this arrow shooting maniac? I'm pretty sure <laughs> that they are probably related to somebody or friends with another person that knows a very similar uh -huh. spell I, and will just do the same thing to uh, you. I don't want more than one we'll arrow coming at me. <laughs> you are going to just die on your deathbed. You're going to live a life for the sons of it. What if I never die? How would you explain to me how you'll never die? There are ways, I'm sure. Amazing. I don't think that's going to happen for you, Fauna. I tell you what, Fauna. Is, it, is there a way to remove this? No. I mean, even if the one that put it on me wants to remove it. Lewis Berry comes walking up, chewing on a hot, looks like a drum of chicken. Where the fuck did 
you get chicken? On that island, we would sort them down the bowl. Sort. Okay. Babe, where did you... Oh. So, uh, you got some sort of magical elf curse on you now? I guess so. It fucking sucks. I fucking agree with that. Barry, what can we do about this? Is there anything we can do about this? I got chicken. Oh. Can you take me to I, it? I did everything we could do. He's he's going to die. He's going to die of old age. Just deal with it. Well, didn't he say he's going to be shot every day, though, with an arrow? Is that what you were saying? That's what, he may sound like he's going to shoot me anytime he wants <laughs> with a fucking arrow. He's probably telling you that he could kill you at any point in time he wants to. With the fear. Yeah, he's making you scared. Any moment you can just hit with an arrow. This man's a psychopath, he You know is. what fights fear? Good breakfast, so why don't we just forget this happened for now and go eat? I don't know if I should ever forget this happened. I, it sounds like I should expect an arrow out of nowhere for no fucking given reason. I swear to God, if well, I were woken is, up while I'm trying to sleep by an arrow oh, in my imagine, chest. imagine sleeping and getting shot with an arrow. Imagine shagging and getting shot with an arrow. Shagging. Imagine you shooting your arrow and then getting shot with an arrow. This is horrible. <laughs> did, did you just say no given reason? It's you. You, you killed. I didn't say no given reason. Yes, you brother, did. yes, you just I'm, did. I'm pretty sure you said no good reason. You're, you're acting Which is like worse. an innocent bystander. You are not. You killed his brother. It was an accident. <laughs> and honestly, it sounds like this. These folks should have come into our camp while we're trying to sleep. Put. Noise to our throats. Yeah, all right, it's neither here nor Threat there. Threaten our lives. Volna. Volna. Stand down. Do you think he can, like, hear you, too? Barry. I'll fucking hope so. Both I, of you, I, shut I, up. I remember what the ba the body smelled like after you. <laughs> Another arrow just comes flying <laughs> into your body. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I'll fall over. <laughs> I'll fall over. <laughs> Take six points of damage. <laughs> Barry goes, holy fuck, I think he can hear you! Hey, mate, if he can hear you, apologize now. Right, right. Where did it hit me? It, right in your shoulder. Oh, I want to take it out. I want to use it like a, a, a microphone. Listen. <laughs> As it's dripping with your blood. Listen. <laughs> I, I think I don't think he's going to make this one. I need you to arrows. stop shooting me with arrows. <laughs> I don't know how you have a bow that can shoot that far, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I accidentally killed someone that was apparently close to you. <laughs> you want to say that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I killed someone that was close to you. Uh, oh, no, it's it? not something I was trying you to do. You see a shadow fly over your head. No. <laughs> As you look up, it's just a bird. <laughs> Alright, listen, mate. We can make this square. We can talk this out. You don't need to be wasting any more arrows on me. Claudia's, like, looking up at the sky. Um, Folder, why don't you just come downstairs, and then I can heal up those wounds and get you, um... Come on, let's go, before anything else comes out of nowhere. Alright. Alright, mate. I'm gonna put you down now. I'll start walking inside. And as you uh, walk downstairs to get healed up, that is where we're gonna end tonight. So, oh, man. thank you guys all for joining us uh, tonight. It was a uh, fantastic, lovely game. I think that was a great episode 30. Uh, thank you for adding a permanent effect to my world by... <laughs> Literally tearing reality open. Nice. So that was beautiful. Love it. All you had to do was say, Are you sure you want to do this? True. <laughs> yeah, but I. You wanted that. But I honestly, uh, deep down inside, I was kind of like, This this will be pretty cool. This will be, <laughs> be pretty cool. All right, everyone. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow for our uh, episode five of Chicago by Night, season three. Really looking forward to that. And I believe, have we also announced the 25th for our 12 hour stream? Yes, I think so, but might as well say. I didn't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. No. I didn't the 25th. know about it. The twenty fifth, October twenty fifth, is going to be our twelve hour stream. We haven't don't have a start time for it, but we know it's going to be on that day. It will be starting with Call of Cthulhu, which I'm very excited to run for you guys. 
Uh, we didn't get to run it um, all the way, the last one, because not only did we have internet connections, but also Carl uh, killed your character um, by peer pressuring yes. you into gambling. I am very easily <laughs> to peer pressure. So, uh, everyone, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. It means a lot to us. And as always, remember, everyone, the best time to tell stories is whenever wait, it's... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Here you go. I'll give it to you this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's whenever it's near dark. Oh, he fucking said it. Oh, wow. I walked all the way over.